Let's just be on our feet one minute and thank the Lord for this beautiful day that he has made. And sing with me this song. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank Jesus. together for Jesus as we have our seats. The Lord is good and all of the time. Today, as I said at the introduction of the Mass, we are supposed to celebrate the fifth Sunday in ordinary time, but as a family, as a church, we are celebrating the feast of St. John Bosco father and teacher of youth, and founder of the Salesian Congregation. In our second reading, taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 4 to 9, we are called to rejoice. He says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. One may ask, themselves, saying, in this difficult time all over the world, most especially in our country, it's not the best time to rejoice. Or we may ask ourselves, why are we rejoicing? Are we rejoicing because petrol fuel uh, price has gone up? For sure not. We cannot also rejoice because rice price have escalated. No. We cannot rejoice because of the ills in society. There are many things, there are many reasons, if also we want to be sad, there are many reasons for us to be sad in our today's world. But today and always, St. Paul invites us to rejoice because we have a good news. There is a good news. The news perhaps we all have been waiting for. We rejoice because as we responded in the psalm of today, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. That is the cause for our joy. Because the Lord himself is our shepherd. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not an ideology. It is not something that is framed out. It is not a philosophical thought. It is real. It is a truth. It is a reality. And it is that reality, it is that truth that uh, the first reading taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel is presenting to us. It is the good news of God that uh, Ezekiel is bringing to us today. And that is why in our first reading today, the prophet Ezekiel chooses to break that good news to us. What is that good news? The good news that God himself has decided to look after us. The good news that God himself has decided to be our shepherd. He says, For thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. I will rescue them 
from every place where they are scattered. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest. May the Lord give you rest in your life. Amen. May the Lord be your shepherd wherever you go. Amen. This good news, my dear brothers and sisters, this promise of God is a response to what we read in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1 to 10. That is the beginning of the chapter 34 of what we read today. Where shepherds fed on their sheep instead of pasturing them. The word of God says in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1 to 9, Woe to such shepherd who pasture themselves instead of the sheep. Woe to the shepherd that do not strengthen the weak nor heal the sick. Woe to the shepherd who do not break, bring back the stray or seek the lost. And the verse 10 of chapter 34 tells us, Look, I am coming against these prophets, against these shepherds, says the Lord. May our incapacity, may our weaknesses never bring the Lord against us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord is not only coming after, against these prophets, against these shepherds. He is coming to take their place. He is coming to be our shepherd. He is coming to pasture us. He is coming to pasture his sheep. He has come, my dear brothers and sisters, to bring back the stray. He has come to rescue the sheep and give them rest. And that is the good news. That is why we are rejoicing today in the Lord. However, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we as Christians, we are the body of Christ. As St. Paul tells us in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 27. And as body of Christ, why it is true that we are the sheep of the pasture of God, he raises us up also to be shepherds, just as he raised up his servant David, as we read in the first reading. Just as he raised up his disciples, as we read in the gospel. Sometimes, like the disciples in today's gospel, we have misconceptions of what it means to be shepherds. We have misconceptions of what it means to be leaders. But Jesus in today's gospel teaches us what it means to be shepherd. To be a shepherd is to be childlike, to be servant, to be humble, to be teachable. For true greatness, the wisdom of a great shepherd lies in humility. The book of Philippians also will tell us, even though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count equality with God. And that is what makes Jesus a true shepherd, because of his humility. God, throughout the history of humanity, continues to raise up shepherds, for specific missions. He continues to raise up shepherds to respond to different situations in our world today. Today, we celebrate a man, a saint, whom God raised to be a shepherd for the young people, most especially the poorest of the poor. A true shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Don Bosco, that we celebrate today, manifested this throughout his life, and it led him to form the saying, for you I study, for you I live, for you I am even ready to give my life. And we, as Salesians of Don Bosco, we, as members of the Salesian family, God has raised us up today to continue this pastoring mission of his sheep, the young people. The question we should ask ourselves today, dear brothers and sisters, as Salesian, I ask myself, how available am I to respond to this mission of God? All of us also, we should ask ourselves, how available are we to, the, to respond to the mission of God? How prepared are we to carry out this mission of God, to be shepherds for our children, 
to be shepherd for the young people we encounter. What kind of shepherds are we today for our young people, for our children in society? If we don't want, if we don't want the Lord to come against us as he came against the prophets, against the shepherds that Ezekiel presented to us, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to act differently. We need to act in a different way. We need to transform our lives. We need to transform our thoughts so that our actions can be conformed to the mind, to the actions of God, the true shepherd, our true father. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Don Bosco was a shepherd for young people of his time. Today, we ourselves in society, in our country, God has placed people before us our leaders, political leaders, are shepherds. What kind of shepherds are they? We can do a lot of analysis of the kind of shepherd we have. With the way things are going in the country, shepherds who feed on the sheep, shepherds who look after themselves instead of the sheep. But when we are put in that position, sometimes I reflect, since the independence of our country, we always pray that is the most constant prayer for good leaders. We pray for good leaders. Today, our young people are sitting here. They will also pray for good leaders. But tomorrow, these good leaders will not fall from heaven to come down. These young people among us will be the good leaders. When you are given this opportunity to shepherd the people of Nigeria, when you are given this opportunity to shepherd the people of God, what kind of shepherd will you be? My dear brothers and sisters, we should be careful. We should be careful to respond to the mission of God. Let us act accordingly so that the wrath of God will not fall upon us. The psalm that we read today, the last verse, is Ephraim, not my favorite son? And God is asking us today, are you people of the parish of Holy Spirit, not my favorite children? The children in whom I delight for show. Sure. You are the children of God in whom he's delighted. Often, often he threatens you not to do you harm, but so that you can be conscious and come back on the right path. Because as the Lord threatens us, as the Lord calls us on the right path, his heart stirs and he shows us mercy. And that is the mercy of God today, my dear brothers and sisters. As we celebrate the Feast of Don Bosco, may we enjoy the mercy of God in our lives, in our families, in wherever we find ourselves through Christ our Lord. Amen.